everyone, welcome back to my channel, if you're new here, my name is Rosie and I'm a research assistant in Arkansas Science at the University of Cambridge and I'm going to show you a couple of days of my life. <laughs> Today's a Thursday in December, I've got a very busy day today and it's very quintessentially Cambridge-y Christmassy day so I thought it would be fun to share. And look, the Cambridge Christmassy markets are here and well they look a bit grim in the daytime and when the sky is this dark but they're fun, they were fun. I've been a couple times now. Yeah, I had guac and crackers for breakfast, don't judge me. So the first thing I did was ate breakfast whilst doing some admin for the Society for the Study of Childhood in the past. I am their social media rep. So I've got to shout them out on here whenever I can. Time to do some measurements of textiles. And then I spent the rest of the morning, well day, actually doing some measurements of thread widths and thread angles of pre-Hispanic mantas, which is like blankets or shawls that the people were using in the Andes region of Colombia. And this clip really solidifies why my boyfriend calls me Master Uguay half the time because I really do look like a tortoise. Look at that neck. I'm doing the measurements on digital microscope images and the images were taken in Colombia, in the British Museum, in many, many different places. Not by me, by my colleague, who is our textile specialist. And then I went out for lunch at Canea. It looks so beige because I accidentally ordered it without the spring onions. But it was nice anyway. And then I went back to work to do more measuring. So the reason we're looking at thread angle is because this can tell us about how the mantas were made. Potentially the level of equipment that was used, the time it would have taken, the amount of skill that would have to be involved in making such a piece. And it means that my colleague has been able to draw out a big table comparing all these different mantas and even just tiny fragments to see if the same sorts of techniques and level of detail were going into every single one, maybe different types and from different places, for example. Also helped decorate the Christmas tree in the department. Yes, this video is late. I do apologise. And that evening, I was invited to try the new Boom Battle Bar in Cambridge. It was their grand opening night and it was so much fun. Okay, no, this is weird. Stop. So yeah, this was gifted. I had no obligation to post, but I wanted to show you what I do outside of work. And also you can't be missing out on these skills. <laughs> skills I am yet to develop. <laughs> We played shuffleboard next and it was my first time. I grasped the rules about halfway through the second match. Better late than never. And I was surprisingly much better at that. <laughs> Let's introduce you to some people. We've got Kate in yellow who does Egyptian coffins and pastes in general. James who is a lithic and also apparently beer pong specialist. <laughs> Unlike myself. <laughs> and Yezzy getting a face done here who studies mainly metals and glass. And Jasmine and Kate who you can't see in these clips but Jasmine does computational modelling and archaeometallurgy and Kate is a specialist in ceramic. <laughs> Hello, I'm now at Queen's College for a formal in my new gown, which I got from a charity shop for £15 because I technically don't actually have a gown because I don't have a college, but I got FOMO because when I come to formal, I don't get the gown and everyone else is in the gown and I wanted a gown, so here we go. I'm very glittery. But it's a Christmas formal. I couldn't tell you how excited I was to be having a Christmas dinner. I could not wait. I was dreaming of all the Christmas formals I had at undergrad. Well, the three Christmas formals I had at undergrad. So much gravy, potatoes, stuffing, you name it. It was delicious. And this menu was pretty promising, I have to say. And I knew with my dietary requirements, I don't eat meat, I'm allergic to milk, that there were going to be some tweaks. But that is a risotto. It was nice, I can't lie, I was very grateful to just have food in front of me, but I just wanted gravy. I'm a simple northern girl. The Christmas pudding wasn't great either, but uh, is it ever? Who actually likes it? I'm, I'm genuinely serious. After the dinner, we walked through the Tudor quad looking like actual Tudors, which was a bit mental, and went and had the next course, because apparently if you sit at high table and you're with the staff, you go to the SCR, like, after dinner room, and we had, well, I didn't have mince pies, but there was mince pies, grapes, a cheese board, basically things I can't eat. These clips are from a different day, but this is the same room and I just wanted to show you how posh it is inside. It's like proper, oldie, tiny, posh Cambridge. I mean, I loved it, don't get me wrong, but even after like eight years now in Oxbridge, this is still just a completely different world to me. I never know how to act, so I just find everything hilarious. The next 
day. The next morning I was up super early to go to Oxford via Cranfield to pick up some samples for an ongoing research project that I'm doing, which is an extension of my master's. It was very, very strange to do this drive again, like three and a half, four years later. Nothing has changed. It is exactly the same. There's still like barely anything there. This was my favorite Chinese restaurant whilst I was in Cranfield. Well, was, I think it's the only Chinese restaurant, but it was a great Chinese restaurant. Then we passed my old street because I didn't actually live on campus. I lived in a little uh, house with studio apartments just outside campus. And his campus, we're approaching. So we don't want to see yeah, I think to, uh, Hello, good morning. I'm in Cranfield and it's so weird. It's also, there's so many people here and because I came in lockdown, there was nobody here. So it's very strange. But anyway, I'm here to pick up some stuff and then I'm heading to Oxford. I'm done already. That was so quick. Aw, I kind of wanted to explore a little bit more to be honest, but oh well. It was actually a good job it was so quick because we had to get straight back in the car to get to Oxford so that my boyfriend could teach by 10 o'clock in the morning. So it was quite tight, but the drive was absolutely beautiful. And this was actually the place where we used to do a lot of our practicals. So we did the CSI one, which I filmed. It's all online. You can find it was right here and just around the corner from there is where we did the excavation modules which are also online you guessed it and this is where we took our thesis pics when we'd submitted everything hello i'm now in the oxford engineering department toilets because this is where my partner works and i'm just gonna go meet sav for lunch at univ college which is nice i'm gonna get college lunch and then probably a tour of the college and then I am meeting Katie, who is the author of this amazing book, The History Gossip and The TikToker, which I'm sure you probably know, or at least have heard of. She's amazing. Doors opening, lift going down, doors closing. You know, it feels so weird to be vlogging in Oxford again, because this is kind of where I'm, I guess, where I'm used to vlogging. I've vlogged so much here. This is where it started. I just wish I had a nicer building rather than this 1960s monstrosity. This is a nice building. Okay, now we're getting a bit more Oxford. The sandstone. This, I think it's John's already, but John's was so big that I forget which parts of it are actually John's. I just witnessed someone making loose leaf tea whilst walking. So Oxford. It's so nice to be back. So like I said, I'm meeting Savannah for lunch, but I think this afternoon I want to try and do some things I've never actually done before in Oxford. I have the day off work, so why not? I'm going. Are you vlogging? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> subscribe to me. Sav is the outreach officer here. Is that your official title? Yes. I do outreach access. I work with disadvantaged schools in Stoke on Trent. In Stoke on Trent, you heard it here first. <laughs> and we're going for lunch now. Yeah. Proper beam ceiling and old people on the portrait. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. escaping. <laughs> this hall was built in 1656, and you can stand like in the back of the hall and look up at the rafters, you can see 1656 written on it. We'll have to do that. <laughs> The statue there in Yunus main quad is one of only two statues of James right, II in the entire world. Entire world. <laughs> and he has no hand apparently. Yeah, he has no hand, don't know why. Don't know Pigeons why. Pigeons love him. <gasps> if you go up the stairs onto the like the second uh first floor. Upstairs first floor, then those two windows to the back. Right. <laughs> I never know which light is which in here, so I just flip. 
stunning. Oh my God, look at the art. This is Hunib's chapel. These are painted glass instead of the stable oh. at the end. Painted glass was cheaper at the time. Hunib wasn't like actually that rich and still isn't in like the wider scheme of Oxford and Cambridge colleges. It's like mid. Um, but the advantage of painted glass is you can get a lot more detail in. Yeah, look at those. The stained glass. You're amazing. Thank you. I know my facts. <laughs> job is giving talks at the college to like school groups and things so what can I say? I'm an experienced <laughs> talk. <laughs> um, well. This one is Adam and Eve. Oh yeah. The Garden of Eden. This is them back when they were still in the Garden of Eden. There's like a camera and a unicorn. They're just like chilling oh, yeah? together. How old are these? Um, I think they're from 1671 by a Dutch guy called Abraham. You think? Don't you you know <laughs> you. This is all masters of the college buried like here. Yeah. Wow. Uh, as well. So they're just chilling. Yeah, that's a bit unnerving actually. Yes. How you get up there? Um, we could find out. I would have thought through these curtains, but there's chairs there. And his portrait was in the dining hall, but it's been taken down just to be restored. Ah. And Sir William Jones is interesting to me because I'm really interested in historical linguistics. And he was one of the first Western scholars to theorise that languages like Sanskrit and Welsh and French and English in particular were all descended from a common language. Uh, which we now call Proto-Indo-European. Proto-Indo-European, yes. A lot of people will look at this with the colonial perspective, that they'll think it's like he, he's telling them what to do. Uh, but you have to ask yourself, who is teaching who? Yeah, they're teaching him. Is he teaching them or is he making notes whilst they tell him about things? That I they think have? he's making notes. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, because when you look at it with the Western eye, you're like, oh, he's the one who's sat, he's clearly in this position. I think it's now. also the heights, like he's sat on a higher level, which yeah. gives it that appearance. But at the same time, the way he is, to me, he looks like he's observing or note taking. And this guy is mm -hmm. the one who's actually yeah. teaching. He's saying, hey, look, this is, this is what we've got. This is yeah. what we've got written down. He's thinking of something to add to the discussion. Yes. Things like that. Anyone can use it. Even though it says private on the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so in the summer, students will like hang out here and they'll have like picnics and stuff. Um, and we'll have like garden games out. And a lot of this is like student accommodation. This is probably out of this building. I'm, I won't lie, it needs a facelift. It would be fine without the scaffolding. It would be fine and just tart up the outside a little bit, give it a fresh coat of paint. Oh, do you know what? I have been here. I came to a bop here and I'm pretty sure it was in a gazebo. On here? I think so. Well, I'll show you where I oh, wait, no, no, is it underground? Yeah, 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 we've got a bar there. It was underground and we and came out. We'll into our library in a second because we just finished repainting <gasps> the ceiling. Ooh. I have been in the library. I'll insert a photo. We came in the library during a bop and sat on the sculpture which <laughs> not proud of but also it was funny <laughs> I know. so this is like cute news houses it's student <gasps> accommodation yeah they're so nice like, these are just four rooms like this whole building is four bedrooms so you get a huge living space on the bottom in the in this house and the top floor is like a little bedroom no way yeah so there's only like four bedrooms that's like a proper studio apartment it's really cool these ones are a little bit smaller, but you still get a set. So, yeah, this, look, there's only three rooms like. Gosh. Section. And how much would that set you back for one of these really nice ones? Um, uni students pay the same no matter which room they get. Wow. Uh, so it's all randomised, unless you've got like a disability or something. So it kind of keeps it fair. You don't accidentally get it. That's really good. It, they pay £5,400 ish a year. What? Um, which is cheap in the grand scheme of universities, but per night might be a little bit more. Yeah, okay, it sounds a lot, but actually I think it's really not that bad <laughs> compared to a lot of other colleges as well. Yeah, literally. Uh, this is Chelsea Clinton's bedroom here on the left, and you know it's hers because it's got the intercom outside, Oh. and there's a little telephone in there, and it's also got bulletproof glass. As you do? Yeah.
look, there's the statue from the picture. <laughs> so because Sav's obviously college staff, she went and asked the porters if we could go up one of the towers. And they said yes. So they led us up this like staircase that just seemed to keep going. And then we had to climb up this little sketchy ladder. And then we were on the roof. And this is one of the nicest views of Oxford I've seen. Like, okay, we're gonna go up St Mary's Tower later and you'll see another amazing view of Oxford. But this was an angle that I never thought I'd see, never have seen. It was stunning. And it was kind of dusk as well. So the lighting was very ambient. And it felt very special because obviously not many people get to go up here. Right. <laughs> I, would, I, I feel like there'll be something valuable in it. Maybe, I, I don't know what. Maybe my mini cheddars, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I'm so happy I got that on camera. Unfortunately, Sav had to go back to work, so I had a bit of time to kill before I met Katie from the History Gossip. This is me in the Central Library, actually trying to get my breath back because the first place I went was Costa and I'm really allergic to milk. I don't know why I did that. There's a lot of milk in the air. I always react to coffee shops. Surprise, surprise, I did, so yeah. And then I went to meet Katie. <laughs> 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 I've been doing that all day, like the wind is not forgiving. She's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to go up St Mary's Tower. This is like my I know place. I take everyone here, I'm not gonna lie. It's a great view and it's very cheap. But my favourite thing about it is the graffiti that's like 400 years old and that's what I promised Katie. We're up St Mary's Tower. I haven't been up here in years and Jesus Christ. Have we just been to this bit, okay? Now there's All Souls and I don't know what that one is. Is that still All Souls? It is, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Where do you study the most? In the Radcam a bit, but to be honest, the college library more than anywhere else, just because it's easy. I'm not even joking, we were there looking at graffiti for like 40 minutes. But isn't it just so humbling to think that for the last 400 years people have been coming up here and writing their names on the wall and now you're just there essentially doing the same thing? It amazes me honestly. I love history. Katie then gave me a quick tour of her college because I'd never been. It's Lincoln College and look how beautiful the library is. Oh my god it's stunning. Then. She showed me this really old door and I got really excited thinking about how many people might have walked through it. Lincoln was founded in 1427, by the way, so it could well have been 600 years worth of people walking through that door. And then she walked me back to the engineering department to go get my stuff and it was absolutely tipping it down. I'm meant to be going straight to the work do. Look at me. There's all things to Kate though. Oh, I am wet. It's been to my work Christmas still. And that is the end of my Friday. I didn't get there till really late, obviously, because we were coming back from Oxford, but it was lovely. It was nice to see everyone. The theme was the end of the world. So my outfit was just my clothes that I'd had on all day, but then I stuck pictures of pubs that were called the world's end. And that was, <laughs> that was it. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in my next vlog.